days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show, everyone. Cornerback depth. Boy, was that a problem in 2023. The 49ers tried to go a few different avenues. They tried Isaiah Oliver. They tried Ambry Thomas on the outside. They brought in guys from outside and brought him in and thought, hey, what about this guy? They tried Jason Fred. He got hurt. They just were trying to figure the cornerback room out. Quarterback room is actually pretty talented. It was in 2023. Our various ward is one of the best cornerbacks in the entire NFL. The 49ers made the right decision by bringing in Charvarius Ward. The Amador Lenore has been a revelation. He stepped up in his second season and has never looked back. First, he came in as a nickel option in place of Sam Womack. Then when Emmanuel Mosley got hurt, he moved outside and he played so good that the 49ers let him roll with that starting position last season. Boy, did he do a good job. And Diamond Lenore not just did that, but showed the versatility to be able to play nickel corner and outside corner pretty much the entire time. Whenever they would go to nickel, he goes into the nickel position, and a different outside corner comes in. And that looks to be the future for Diamond Lenore until they got to the draft. Now the 49ers have some options, and the 49ers didn't just have options in the draft, but they found options as well in free agency. The 49ers have addressed this room. Isaiah Oliver is gone. He's not going to be on this team. The likelihood is this is the end of the road for Jason Verrett's attempts to play for the San Francisco 49ers because they're trying to make sure that they don't have a weakness at corner. And we all love Jason Verrett, but... You can get young guys that can step up and play critical snaps down the stretch. That's exactly what you want. So the 49ers fell really comfortable with cornerbacks one and two, Arvarius Ward and Diameter Lenore. I don't think anyone would argue with the fact that those two guys are the top guys. Now, there could be an argument whether Diameter Lenore is best on the inside at nickel or on the outside as outside corner. My belief is he's the second best corner on the team, the second best cover guy on the entire roster. And if you have your team the way you want it, you want your two best cover guys playing on the outside. The problem is the 49ers have had a real weakness at nickel corner when it comes to helping in the run and still being able to cover. Juan Williams was pretty good in coverage and was a shark when it came to stopping the run. Now, as teams started changing the way they were running personnel groupings and playing some more tight ends in space or bigger wide receivers, it made it more difficult for K1 Williams at the position. He was a little bit smaller. It was a little bit harder for him to hold up at the position. So we've seen the 49ers go through a little bit of a change as well, including going ahead and giving Jimmy Ward a chance at playing the position, a safety at that spot. Was he successful in the run defense? Yes. Did he struggle in coverage? Yes. So the 49ers are still trying to figure this thing out. Isaiah Oliver was a guy drafted as a cornerback And so I believe they thought, hey, this guy played outside corner. He showed some ability to play inside. Maybe we can get the best out of both worlds and get a safety type guy when it comes to stopping the run, but a guy who can play corner enough to cover guys the the whole time. The problem was Oliver wasn't up to the task. Was he a great run defender? Absolutely. But really, when it came down to it, he struggled even more than Jimmy Ward did when it came to stopping the pass. He just couldn't get it done. So the 49ers had to make a change, and that meant moving Diamond Lenore on the inside. Ambry Thomas on the outside. Now, Ambry struggled, and so here we are trying to figure out what's going to happen between these guys. But 49ers have a plan. We're going to go over that in this episode. We're going to talk about this position. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Audio platform, 49ers Cutback on Believe. Please give it a five-star rating. If you're going to bet, bet with Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your summer sports this season, from MLB, golf, NBA, and NHL playoffs. 
All the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online. The game starts here. Well, let's talk about this cornerback room. I, I talked about it a little bit. Charverius Ward and Diamond Lenore are the number one and two cornerback on the team. But the 49ers didn't rest on their laurels. They went out and made sure that they could improve this DB room. How exactly did they do that? Well, we know Ambry Thomas is going into the last year of his contract. So is Diamond Lenore. And they needed to address that outside corner if Lenore was going to have to play inside. The 49ers know that Lenore might be the best answer early because he's the best nickel corner on the roster currently. So they went out and they signed from the New Orleans Saints, Isaac Yedem. And Isaac Yedem played eight games last year for the New Orleans Saints because of an injury to Paulson Adebo. He stepped right in and he played well. He did a good job. He's got great length. He's got the ability to play zone. He's got pretty good speed. He's got fluid hips. And he's a guy that's been ascending. Now, he's been in the league for a little bit since 2018. Where was he in 2018? He was in Denver. Who else was in Denver? Brandon Staley. Uh, Brandon Staley comes to the 49ers, and all of a sudden, there's players that he's familiar with that are ending up here as free agents. And Isaac Yedem is one of those guys. Isaac Yedem is a solid improvement over Ambry Thomas. He's longer. He's more physical at the point of attack. He plays better in zone. He doesn't get beat by double moves very often. So the 49ers have to feel very comfortable with the outside corner role that Isaac Yedem could play. So what do you do? Do you just play Isaac Yedem outside and then Ambry, or then Diamond Lenore comes in? No. Diamond Lenore is still going to play outside starting when the 49ers are in their base 4-3 packages. The problem is most teams are going to put the 49ers in their nickel package because teams want to get you a nickel to help get matchups that they like in the run game and in the passing game, but especially the run game now. They want to get your nickel corner on the field and then take advantage of one of their bigger wide receivers being able to block him in space instead of having your third linebacker on the field. Now, we don't know what the 49ers linebacker situation is ultimately going to look like. We're going to talk about that in a later episode. And teams may want to attack the 49ers third linebacker. That's possible. In those cases, Lenore's in, base four, three sets. But in nickel, I think he's going to slide to the nickel corner spot early in the season. I think right now he's still the best nickel corner. We're going to talk about the fact that they addressed it in the draft, but this is probably the best scenario early. Isaac Getham comes in, fills the Ambry Thomas role on the outside, opposite of Mooney Ward and Diamond Lenore for 70 to 75% of the snaps, steps inside. That's your best lineup early. So Demo's got to be your number one guy in the nickel corner spot. Mooney Ward, the number one outside guy. Demo, the number two outside guy. Isaac Yedem, the number three outside guy. And I think we feel a lot more comfortable as fans knowing that Isaac Yedem is going to be that guy. But the 49ers weren't done at all in free agency. They went out and they got Rock Yassin. Rock Yassin was drafted in the second round of the 2019 draft just ahead of Debo Samuel. Rock Yassin has had a pretty good career in the NFL. He played for the Colts. He played for the Raiders. He played for the Ravens. Last year with the Ravens, not a lot of opportunities. And in fact, Rock Yassin's been dealing with a little bit of a knee over the last couple of years. So this guy, you're not so sure. You like his physicality. You like his measurables. You like some of the things he's done in the league. But where is he at physically? Of course, the doctors must have signed off enough to believe that he's going to be ready. But taking a shot on Rock Yassin really... It wasn't that big of a deal because the 49ers aren't exactly spending a lot of money when it comes to the SN. But you could potentially get a guy that can play on the outside. The 49ers are making sure that they take care of their cornerback position. Last year, it became a real weakness. Young guys that they have drafted that they expected to step up haven't really materialized and played to the level at which they expect them to play. So now they're going the veteran route. Of course, they're going to draft a guy later, and we're going to talk about it in a second. But You have guys now that you feel comfortable that understand the system, that understand how to be a NFL pro at the cornerback position. What you're hoping for is consistency. You're not getting consistency out of your cornerback position. You're not getting run-stopping ability out of your cornerback position. 
What was the big one of the big problems down the stretch in the playoffs? You were struggling with a force defender followed by an alley defender being able to make the play. A lot of times your force defender is your outside corner. Your alley defender is sometimes a safety and sometimes it's a nickel corner. Run fits were so important for that area. So what do they do? Isaac Getum, Rock Gassin, physical at the point of attack. Better in run fits. Better force defenders. Better guys to help you in that category. So it's been attention that the 49ers have had to pay to the position to get better in coverage and to get better as far as stopping the run. They've elected to go the veteran route. Because, guess what? Veterans have been around, they've seen it all, and they're having experience in that. The 49ers know they're making a run at the Super Bowl. They know they've got to have the guys that are ready to do it. So, get them, rock you in, and then the second-round pick, pick 64, Renardo Green. And Renardo Green, I watched a lot of him in college. Of course, I'm a Florida State fan, so I've seen all of his games. And the dude is a talented player. Most people will tell you that he went out and he stopped – uh, Dylan Neighbors, and he did such a great job. And you know what? He did. He is a phenomenal athlete. The other thing about him, attitude, physicality, the way he plays, he is destined to play nickel corner for the San Francisco 49ers. Now, I think coming in, he's going to have to work behind Yammer Lenore. He's going to have to figure this defense out. Dick Sorsen, the new defensive coordinator, was the nickel corner coach over the last two seasons. And he did that when he was with Seattle as well. He has the ability to work well with nickel corners. And I think he probably targeted Renardo Green because of his savviness, his physicality, and his ability to transition where you need him. There's versatility there. If you have him, Diamond Lenore, and, and Traverius Ward on the field, you could pretty much, depending on matchup, flip them wherever they needed to go. Whoever needed to go inside could go inside. Whoever needed to go outside could go outside. You could find matchups that work for you. Versatility is so important. Also, getting a dog that can play the way the Bernardo Green is important. So the 49ers have their answer eventually at nickel. And, of course, that could mean Diamond Lenore staying outside. If that's the case, then you probably have your two best outside corners on the field. Now, there's always the off chance that Isaac Yedem comes in or Rockison comes in and they're outplaying Diamond Lenore on the outside, and then you move him inside. That's always a possibility unlikely because of the way Demos played. He's an absolute hyena. So you have a hyena, and now with Renato Green, you have an absolute dog. These dudes go out there and they make plays consistently. So very hyped about Renato Green being added to this room because this cornerback room was lacking a little bit when it came to nickel corners. The San Francisco 49ers hadn't had a guy that was able to do it besides Demo. They had drafted Sam Womack, and I'm pretty sure this was the idea for Samuel Womack. They drafted him out of Toledo in the fifth round, and they thought, we're going to put them at nickel corner. He showed on film that he's physical enough. He flies around. He makes tackles. He's got the mentality for it. We're going to put him there, and he's going to be able to handle it. But what happened in his rookie season? Week one, he struggled a little bit. Week two, he got benched. He went out there, and he wasn't performing against the Denver Broncos, and the 49ers benched him and put in Diamond Lenore. Since then, they've relegated Sam Womack to playing outside. Jimmy Ward went on podcast and said, yeah, they did not like the way the Sam Womack played in run fits. You have to be able to be physical. You have to be able to move in one accord, but you have to get a relationship with the linebackers and know what gap responsibility you have and when you're supposed to be there to be the alley defender and when you're supposed to be there for the cutback lane. Very important that you be able to do the things in the run game when you're playing nickel corner. Nickel corners becoming a very difficult position because not only do you have to cover guys in a two-way go, they can go inside, they can go outside, and there's a lot of space either way for them to be able to go. But also, you have to play like a linebacker in the running game. That's not something that Sam Womack has been able to do. It has been something that Diamond Lenore has been able to do and maybe what Renardo Green can do. So what do the 49ers also do at nickel corner? They brought in Chase Lucas. Chase Lucas used to be at Arizona State. Playing for who? Herm Edwards. 49ers feel comfortable with what Herm Edwards says about his players. Chase Lucas was also there with Brandon Ayuk. He was also there with new first-round pick Ricky Pearsall. So there are some lines of connection there between these players. But John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan feel comfortable with guys who Herm Edwards says are good character guys. In fact, I like Chase Lucas when he came out of... 
college. I thought he was a guy the Fournier's could target. He made a lot of sense. He's physical. He covers pretty good. Uh, he's been in Detroit. It hasn't worked out. He hasn't materialized in that player. So the 49ers now have three nickel corners on their roster. Yammer Lenore, Renardo Green, and Chase Lucas. Now, of course, it's in that order. That's the depth chart for the nickel corner spot. Last year, the 49ers decided that they were going to go out and get, in the fifth round, another cornerback in Darrell Luter Jr. And Luter Jr. unfortunately dealt with a little bit of an injury during the offseason, so he got a late start on being ready to help the San Francisco 49ers. Now, what's interesting is Darrell Luter Jr. was available for the playoffs and Super Bowl. Samuel Womack wasn't. Womack was inactive. You might say, well, Darrell Luter Jr. is good on special teams. What if I told you that Sam Womack is one of the best gunners that the 49ers had on their roster, maybe the best gunner on their roster that was capable of playing last year? So it couldn't have all been special teams. That couldn't have been the complete reason that Darrell Luter Jr. played over Womack. Darrell Luter Jr. is more physical. Darrell Luter Jr. is longer. Darrell Luter Jr. is a guy they think can play outside and on the inside potentially. I don't know about the inside. We're going to see. But this... Cornerback room is very interesting and it's very talented. They've got guys they believe in, guys they've drafted, guys that they continue to have on their roster. Where does Ambry Thomas fit? Ambry Thomas has been up and down. There are moments that Ambry Thomas looks like he's ready to become that guy. Celebrating with Steve Wilkes after an interception. Telling him, hey, I told you. Steve Wilkes very hyped about Ambry Thomas. Who Ambry Thomas, after an injury, not wanting to have contact. What exactly happened? What was the mentality? What was the mindset that affected Ambry Thomas in those situations? Well, I'll tell you, it made the 49ers feel so uncomfortable with them that they went out and they signed two guys that could potentially fill his role. The 49ers are not going to allow that cornerback room to be a deficit. They've put so much money into the defensive line, so much money into the linebacker room, that that secondary has to step up. And that cornerback room has to be able to make the plays that they need to make. It's not Traverius Ward. It's not Diamond or Lenore. It's been everyone else. So did the 49ers get better or good enough for everybody else to help this team and this roster step up? I think they did. Well, let's go through the depth chart a little bit, how I see it stand right now. I think the number one and two, Mooney Ward and Diamond or Lenore. I think Isaac Yedem is the number three guy now in the room. Uh, his ability to play outside and be that first guy in is going to be very important for the 49ers in the 70 to 75% of the snaps that Demo plays the nickel early on in the season. When will Renardo Green potentially take over? Can he take over? Those are things we're going to have to figure out when we get to training camp. Now, 49ers are going to see rookie minicamp, OTAs. are going to start getting an idea where Renardo slots and how he fits. But right now, Isaac Yedem is definitely cornerback three. Cornerback four, I'm going to put Renardo Green because Renardo Green has versatility. We've seen him play outside. We know he's got the potential to play inside of the nickel corner spot. He's got potential to play some safety if you need him. He's fast. He's physical. He can lock you up. He's one of the best press uh, man cover guys coming out of this draft, and he's an absolute dog. He's one of those guys that's going to step up, and he's going to hit you in the mouth, and he doesn't think that he can't play any position. Overall confidence is something that Renardo Green has. So I think he's the fourth guy. So you've got four very solid guys. And of course, it's a projection with Renardo Green. We got to see how he fits the system, see how he translates to the NFL. But he looks like he's going to be one of those guys that can do it and do it at a high level and do it early. Could he be a Diamond Lenore type player? Maybe even more upside. We'll see. Number five is Rock Yassin. I, I think they brought Rock Yassin in for a reason. The physicality, the way he fits multiple systems, he's played in a bunch of different defensive schemes, and he's been able to hold up in every single one of them. But he's a guy that's physical. He, he battles with wide receivers. He competes. He's tough in the run game. He makes good tackles. He creates turnovers. Rock Yassin is going to be a guy that has a shot to make this team. I don't know how many corners the San Francisco 49ers are going to keep on their roster. Some years they keep five. Some years they keep six. I think it's going to be determined by how many of these guys step up. But think about that. Two free agent signings, two veterans, and guys who have been in the league for a little bit. Rock, Rock Yassin's been in the league since 2019. Isaac Yedem since 2018. 
they're going to be potentially on this roster. Both of them might make it with some of the young cats that are there. Now, Mooney Ward, he's been in the league since 2019. And Yamano Lenore has been in the league since 2021. So we've got a little bit of time for these guys that they've been in the league. And, of course, Renardo Green's a young cat in his rookie season. So let's talk about the guys who could be competing for one spot if Rocky Sin does make this roster. There's five cornerbacks with Rocky Sin could mean there's only one spot available if the 49ers even elect to keep six. Some years they've elected to keep five. Well, Ambry Thomas, 49ers spin a third-round pick on him. He was their third cornerback last year. Does he all of a sudden go from being third cornerback to being out? Well, he's definitely been put on notice. Whenever somebody goes out and they, they draft a cornerback in the second round and they sign two, two free agents that play your position, I'm pretty sure that gets your attention. If Ambry Thomas ever thought about the fact that he needs to do whatever he can to make this team, it's now. If not, he's going to be somewhere else. There's a real shot that when we get to the first cut, or not the first cuts, probably the last cuts, that Ambry Thomas ends up moving on to another football team. We've talked about this for a couple of years and it's never materialized, but I think this is the real time the 40 yards have made some moves that it could happen. Now, I'd love to see Ambry Thomas step up, make plays, and be the guy that everyone believes he could, but it's going to be tough sledding for him. Right behind him is Darrell Luter Jr., and... The reason I put Luter Jr. behind him is just experience. Darrell Luter Jr., I like the measurables. I like how physical he plays. He's a tough guy. He's a smart kid. But he's coming in, and he just hasn't played as many snaps as Ambry Thomas. Ambry Thomas, in his rookie year in 2021, had an interception to clinch the 49ers a playoff spot. Ambry Thomas had had snaps in the playoffs, critical snaps. That experience goes a long way. So Darrell Luter Jr. has the ability to overtake Ambry Thomas because he's proven to be more physical. He's proven to be more tough. He's proven to be a better special teams player. Those things all figure into him potentially getting that last spot. But those two guys are in a real battle. And what is Darrell Luter Jr. going to do as far as playing nickel? Is he just an outside corner like Ambry Thomas? Ambry doesn't have the ability to play inside. Uh, the lack of versatility is going to hurt him. If Darrell Luter Jr. could show versatility to play inside in a pinch even, that could make the 49ers decide to go Luter Jr. over Ambry Thomas. So his versatility is going to be something big when we get into training camp. How many times do we see him at nickel? How many times do we see him outside? My guess is we're going to see him primarily outside and they're going to see what he can do. They would love for Darrell Luter Jr. to beat out Rocky Sen to be able to be one of those top five guys on the roster. And shoot, if he does, that's great news. A younger guy with upside who doesn't have injury concerns. That's what the 49ers want. Is that going to happen is the bigger question. Well, I think it all comes down to Luter Jr. and his transition to the NFL. How's this offseason going to go? How is offseason going to go? Can he stay healthy? And if he does, what are we going to get from Luter Jr.? I still like Luter Jr. I still think he's got a real chance to make this football team now, he could even take Rock Yassin's job. I just think right now, Rock Yassin would be favored. But I do like Luter Jr. and his ability, and he could even be the sixth cornerback if they elect to go six. Sam Womack is behind Darrell Luter Jr. Who would have thought this two years ago? Not me. I didn't think so, and I don't think anyone else did either. Womack was impressing everyone in preseason with interceptions. He looked like an absolute playmaker that could get things done for the 49ers defense. Then he got a start. He was a starting nickel corner. 49ers cut the veteran ahead, and we're like, hey, we got this guy. He's going to make plays. He didn't. Samuel Womack has not lived up to the expectations. He hasn't lived up to what everyone thought he was going to be. And even on the outside, he hasn't been able to be consistent in coverage. When the 49ers push came to shove, they decided to go a different direction. Womack has got to step it up. Does Womack have the tools? Absolutely. Samuel Womack has the tools to be a starting cornerback in the NFL. He just hasn't been able to put it together. Unfortunately, that's a story that we hear often. Is guys who had all the physical tools in the rule in the world were set up to be those guys and they just don't work out. Or maybe he's just not in the right situation in San Francisco and needs a new uh, scenery to be able to make it happen. I don't know. But I am hoping, this is my hope, that Ambry Thomas, Sam Womack, and Darrell Luter Jr. come in like absolute gangbusters, and we see the best possible group of those three guys. 
because the best situation is that the best two of those make the roster. If that happens, that means young cats are stepping up and making plays. The 49ers were able to move on from Ambry Thomas. They're able to move on from Rocky Sen, and the 49ers have a shot. Could Ambry Thomas step up in there? Maybe. We'll see. Now, who else is behind them that's on this roster? Because this roster at cornerback is really deep. Case Lucas, who I brought up earlier. And I think he comes in as the third nickel corner, but towards the bottom of this roster. He's got a long way to go. This is an uphill climb. And everywhere he looks, he sees draft picks. Samuel Womack, fifth round pick. Darrell Litter Jr., fifth round pick. Ambry Thomas, uh, third round pick. Those are all picks by the San Francisco 49ers. This organization likes those guys a lot. And then up there ahead of him is Rocky Sen, who is a second round pick, who showed potential in this league, a veteran that's been around. So this is going to be tough for Chase Lucas. They ain't afraid of no competition. The dude's a battler. The dude's tough. He's physical. He knows how to cover, and he plays hard again in the run game. I think he's going to be somebody that's going to show up. So Chase Lucas, I think he's on the outside looking in. And in fact, I think he's on the outside looking in with Samuel Womack and Ambry Thomas. And then, of course, the last guy on the list, Kamon Hall. I don't even know if he's going to be on this roster here, you know, in the next few days or a week or so when the 49ers officially sign their undrafted free agents. I don't know. But I think he's got a long ways to go, potentially. And he's, he's, a, he's definitely on the outside looking in. I think right now the battle comes down to those middle four guys. Rocky said, Ambry Thomas, Darrell Luter Jr., and Sam Womack. The best two were probably going to make this roster, and maybe even the best one. But let's say the best two. Who's it going to be? I'm really interested to see how this cornerback room plays out. Each of them have strengths and weaknesses that are definitely been able to be seen on film and through the years we've been able to tell. For Rocky Sin, it could just be as simple as he's just not healthy anymore. He's not the same player because of the injuries. For Ambry Thomas, it could be that that injury that he suffered last year changed his mentality and made him not want to be physical. That definitely won't fly with the 49ers' physical mind frame for playing quarterback or cornerback. Darrell Luter Jr., how much is he going to impress? How much has he made a jump in year two? Sam Womack, is he finally ready to be the guy that he's supposed to be? I don't know. What I do know is the 49ers got a lot better at the cornerback position. The top four guys are exciting. You added Renardo Green to a room that had just added Isaac Yedem in free agency. I think the 49ers feel comfortable. They feel confident in that room. And now we have a cornerback room that matches up with the linebacker room and the defensive line room. Really exciting group. I'm excited about the cornerback position, but I want to hear from you. I want to know who you guys think uh, this cornerback room should be. You know, who? How do you have your list? Who are the guys that are ahead? Do you have it the same way I do? Uh, are you not as high on Rocky Sen? I think that's a fair statement. If you said Rocky Sen was below Darrell Luter Jr. and some of the other guys, I, I wouldn't really argue with you. I just think that the 49ers had so much uh, that they put into it to get guys that are veterans because they weren't comfortable with the room that I put them there. But I would understand for sure if you had that. I think the conversation probably starts around Rocky Sen. The top four guys is pretty easy to figure out, but then it gets a little bit interesting. Are you excited about a guy like Chase Lucas to see what he's got? Uh, let me know in the comments section. Like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you're listening to an audio platform, 40 Yards Cut Back on Believe, which is available, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to your podcast. This episode of 40 Yards Cut Back was brought to you by Bet Online, where the game starts. I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Until then, stay safe. And remember, the right way is always the 49ers way.